Welcome to my TS350 video. Um, well, today we're going to be rebuilding the body of the TS350. Um, we've got a couple of parts which are brand new. We've got a new uh, Wartech head. The cylinder on the old one was worn out. Um, so we've got this replacement cylinder and piston. You see there's an arrow on that. That, that denotes the direction of exhaust I've already put the the piston rings on in advance but the first thing we've got to do um, is rebuild the body I'll put that to one side I've spent a long time cleaning up these surfaces of the casing in advance of the gasket because we have to be careful because this is the fuel tank of the saw so we don't really want any impurities on that it's a little bit stained in places I've cleaned up what I can um, but the mating surfaces have to be very good um, to hold the fuel in otherwise we're going to get problems down the line which will be difficult to resolve so now's the golden opportunity to clean this we've got a gasket here for it but the first thing I'm going to do I've got a bit of a paper towel here let's give everything a give the surfaces a little wipe down with some methylated spirits just to clean it any surface grease should hopefully be dissolved in this alcohol I have actually got the crankshaft on ice when we get to that stage So this gasket is being stored a bit less than carefully and it's slightly distorted but I'm not going to worry too much because I'm going to be uh, using a bit of gasket sealant just to give it a base so I'll put a, a smear of that round the edge. I'm just aiming to put a thin coating on. Obviously I want to do a good enough job so it sticks the gasket down. It's quite easy to get it in the holes. Got a bit of something in the tank there. Now this saw ain't going to get filled with fuel for a while so this will all have time to cure and it is oil and fuel resistant by nature. It's quite difficult to evenly spread it actually. I just want it all black instead of metal. Right, I think that should do it. Let's put a bit more on that corner there. The gasket should do it, but I just want this to keep it in check. Well, we're reasonably well aligned with the holes there. It's still trying to lift off. Just put a bit in. To keep it in, to keep it in place. And we'll do the other half. Uh, being a game, you see I've got the fuel filter in there. That's been cleaned. You can actually remove it through there, but since I've got such good access, it would be a shame not to. then I'll uh, go get the crankshaft. I've put that in the freezer 
um, with the intention of contracting it so it goes through the inner of the bearings easier. It's a, a trick I've been meaning to use for a while. I think last time I did one I didn't do that, but I don't think I knew the trick then. It's a bit of a still stout sandwich. The whole thing. Reasonably happy with that. Just a bit more on there. Right, I'll go get the crankshaft. And I've got the crankshaft. So I know the left hand thread side is for the clutch. I'm holding it with a piston. that way. It's quite a confuser. Yep, yeah, it's that way. Put that in. And then this is the ignition side. things things which I'd rather not Ugh. wiggle side would be tight unfortunately One side in and one side that doesn't want to go in. And things have got better. A couple of taps with the rubber hammer there. Just made its mind up. That's quite irritating. So I'm just going to check my gasket is something like aligned. And we'll give it some more. See, we're getting closer. Right, that's it with the hammer. The screws can take the rest up. Well, we've had a bit of a struggle there. What I've done, I've put the screws in. That'll keep the gasket in check. Gave it a few taps with a hammer. We've even got a, a screw in there. So... I think the next stage is put some more screws in and then we can tap it and torque these down. was not easy. We're not out of the woods yet. You 
can actually hear it go down as you turn the screws. I'm just going to gently tighten them up a bit. A little bit at a time. Try and keep it going down nice and even. Now see I'm focusing on this area where the crankshaft is. That's where the tension is. I'm not using too much force. Minimal lab, sir. The casings are happy to come together under that little force. Most of the way there. Well, we have a couple of pins to uh, reinstate. We've got one here. Let's check the hole's clear, and it is, so that's good news. Don't really want to go in. There's one here as well. Ah. That's one in. To its friend. Going this way. He was a larger punch, fitting the groove better. Right, I've gave everything a really good tighten down, just just look by hand. Um, I tried to find some torque settings out for this, but failed. The only one I found was the spark plug, and unfortunately, we're not at that stage yet. So, there seems to be very little information on rebuilding these saws, so I just mirrored The torque to which they were set to, using a bit of judgment and a hand tool. So, flywheel, I'll put that on. So if you have put the crankshaft in back to front, this is the stage where you will know where you affix the flywheel. Just take care to align the woodruff key there with the keyway. Find it always best to rotate the crankshaft so everything's upright. I'll just loose fit that for now. Clutch. First up. The clutch. 
there's writing on it one side um, I'm pretty sure the writing goes outside but it probably doesn't make any real difference in the interest of consistency that's what I'm going to do <coughs> just give the inner of the clutch a tap as it's been A little stubborn. I'm pretty sure that goes there. And then we've got that complete with a bearing in the middle. But I'm not going to put that on because I'm still waiting on a replacement nut for this. The nut's left hand thread on the clutch side and it, it was damaged removing, removing it. So I've ordered another one and it hasn't yet arrived, much to my disappointment. So now I'm going to remove the old piston which can be quite brutal with as it's uh, not going to be reused and that's one clip out I don't really care if I do any jit Quite fiddly these clips. They fit in the in a groove. And that's another clip out. You get ping across the workshop. Our next stage is to push that through. And it seems to be stuck. That's not very good. I should use that part of a 3 8 drive extension, pushed in it, wiggled the piston. Totally free. You can see that is one damaged piston. Unfortunately, that damaged the bar. So, we have a new piston, and I've put the rings on already. There's a little tab there, and another one there. The rings have to, imagine you're pushing them and they just wrap round that. That's how it goes. So we'll get that fitted. <coughs> the arrow always points towards the exhaust. So now the saw's in pieces, I'm gonna have to have a think. Yes. It's the front of the saw. And we'll get a new one of them with a kit, which is really good. I'll assemble that with a bit of grease. One thing you don't get is a new bearing. But there was no detectable play in it, so that wasn't something I saw fit to order. A lot were easier. Now for the tricky bit. I've 
got these little clips. Either side of the piston. If we don't put these in right, it'll be goodbye to this new cylinder. There is a groove inside the piston. Oh, there's quite a lot of tension in that. I'm going to have a look at it before I proceed. Well, that were easier than a four saw. So. Pair of snipe nose pliers. Grip this bit. Put the tail in first. Push. I've got it in, I just need to press it into the groove. That's that removed head gasket. I don't think there's any preferred way. Um, cylinder install but before I do that I'm just going to check these piston rings are aligned in the dowels in the piston the lower one had just escaped incidentally when I fitted these piston rings I fitted the top piston ring over the top of the piston and the lower one bear in mind the piston was removed from the con rod I just gently moved it up the full length of the piston and it dropped in the groove I took my time on that that's why I haven't put it on film I think a bit thin smear of grease just to help us on his way to line the gasket a bit better so that's the inlet side and that's the exhaust side just keep giving it a little twist it should go on with very little force have a look and see if the gasket holes are aligned now we just adjust the gasket just marginally before I took the head down uh, I've just had a little think about it what I'm gonna do is fit this carburetor gasket while the head's still loose so I think it'll probably make I want to tighten all these down evenly. I am going to make these quite tight because we do we do want a good seal here that can affect the mixture. So I've got the exhaust off the donor store. I'm pretty reasonably sure it goes thick gasket, steel spacer, steel gasket. So 
So we do need a good seal to this exhaust. And I've used the donor saw because it saved a repair. Gave it a clean, tap things out. Because it was pretty filthy inside. We'll maybe see some of the mess here. Oh, swap this bolt out, and uh, seems to be doing better. Slightly stiff, but not detrimental. And then, if I can find it, there should be a small nut there. I think we're actually missing from this, so. complete just going to swap this breather from the donor so put that on there also got a fuel cap from a donor so I'm just going to calibrate it so it stays in the tank One thing to remember is always put your carburetor on the correct way up. It should be facing down. Now, before I end this video, I just want to go through something I've been asked to do. Um, I've got the cover here for the still saw there is a part number there hopefully you can see it on the camera and this is the throttle rod as I squeeze the trigger it's stiff 
that rod moves up and down and then this one obviously is the choke now this rod there engages on this piece of the carburetor so when I put the cover on it should operate the carb Make sure it's in these grooves. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more.